So one of the most important things about saltwater offshore kayak fishing is safety and being aware of the weather conditions, uh, how they are at the moment, and how they could change. And so some of the resources that I use uh, to make sure that you're going to have a safe, fun day offshore is a website called swellinfo.com. And you're going to type in your area there, and they're going to give you a swell forecast, a wind forecast, a direction of the wind, we were hoping to go offshore today, um, and as you can see, it's probably not going to be the best idea today. They've, we've had, you know, and probably about a hip high swell, and uh, the winds have started to back off today. But earlier today, the winds were in the 10 to 12 sustain with some 15 mile an hour gusts, making for choppy conditions. So some of the things that we're checking out here are going to be the wind direction and the swell height. And anytime we have a swell that's over two to three feet, you're going to talk about some conditions that are going to get, start getting pretty dicey out there. Um, the wind direction, onshore wind, is going to be a south wind that's coming from the south onto shore. And a southeast wind is going to build our surf really quickly. So if you have a two to three foot swell and a south wind that's say 10 to 15 miles an hour, our surf is going to go from flat to waist to chest high quickly. That's going to be unsafe conditions. You're not going to want to try to launch through that surf zone with surf that, that big. Once that swind, wind switches around and goes offshore, flowing from the north to the south, it will knock the surf down, which is going to, what's going to start happening Saturday afternoon. You can see this swell start dropping off, and you'll notice here the wind will start switching around west 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 to the northwest and notice how it's green when it's green that means you've got clean conditions typically the wind will be blowing from the north to the south laying the surf down in the impact zone as well as the wind chop on the water now when the wind picks up and flows stronger out of the north the swell will start building from the shore out to sea. So I always tell people never go offshore if the wind is blowing any stronger than say 12 to 15 miles an hour because you won't see the swell from the land but once you get out there the swell the further you go out the larger it will get and the harder it will be to return to shore. So swell info is a great resource. It's going to give you the swell height that's out at sea, the wind direction, and the surf. So we couldn't go today. We're not going to go tomorrow, but you can see Sunday it's going to lay down. We'll have a little bump there towards dark, and it'll start picking up again on Monday, but we'll have plenty of time to get out there and get some work done on Monday as well. So another resource that I use that I use regularly is an app called WindFinder. You can also use it here on your laptop. And what it's going to give you is going to be a weekly forecast of the wind, uh, how strong it's going to be, and what direction it's coming from. These little arrows are pointing the direction that the wind is going to go, and these are the wind speeds. And then you'll also have a wave direction, and you'll have some tidal info. You always want to know what your weather is going to be. I'll always check the Weather Channel first. You can use Wonder, uh, Wonder Earth. They have a pretty good weather bug. Um, but this, you can do your weekly, your hourly. Um, a lot of times I'll use the hourly. Uh, if I need to know what direction that wind is going to come in the morning, I'll kick on my hourly forecast and I'll go in 6 a.m. The weather is, uh, or the wind's going to be north, northwest at two miles an hour. That's great. It's going to be laying down the, the surf a little bit, cleaning things up, and you can just go through the hourly forecast and look at it. With the Weather Channel, what I'm typically looking for is going to be storm. Um, I'm looking for if we're going to have any sort of thunderstorms. If there's a strong percentage of thunderstorms, then I'm going to be checking out the radar. Okay, so on Saturday, we've got a 10% chance of precipitation. I'm not really going to go any further than that. But say there was like a 40 or 50% chance, like here we've got PM thunderstorms. I would go to that and then I would also check out the radar. 
Oftentimes I'll wake up in the morning at three or four o'clock in the morning and if I know I've got a storm that's going to be out there in the Gulf, I'll pull up the radar kind of look at the fort, what's going on right then, where the storm is coming from, see if we've got a long enough window of opportunity to get out there safely and get back in, and then I'll check out the future radar. It's really important. You gotta know where those thunderstorms are because the wind can kick up quickly. If a thunderstorm comes in, the wind can go from five to 10 to 20 in the blink of an eye. So you gotta know that. We're glued to our phone the entire time we're out there watching these uh, radar, watching the wind forecasts, paying attention to the weather that's around us. If you ever feel a cool breeze hit you in the back of the neck, it's time to head to shore quickly because things change quickly out there. And if you're not aware of your surroundings and what's forecasted to happen, you can get in a bad situation quickly. All right. So another um, resource that I'll use are the surf cams that are on the beach. You know, here Navarre up here has a surf cam and they'll you know kind of just show you what's happening in the shore break um, out on the first sandbar once they pan out and then on the outside edge of the second sandbar uh, if i haven't if i'm not launching first thing in the morning and i'm going to go a little later i can pull up these cams or in the afternoon when i'm looking at how the conditions may have laid down if the wind has switched and gone offshore i'll pull up this surf cam and see what the shore breaks like because when you're looking at surf, the most important thing to know is, are you gonna be able to break through the surf without rolling your kayak, losing your gear, someone getting injured? Normally, if you can get through it safely, once you get out past the breakers, you can, you can manage what's out there, um, unless it's over, say, like three to four foot. So we're looking at how the surf is coming in, what the the distance between the sets and the waves are. We call that the period. So if you have a long, period, that means there may be five to eight seconds in between each wave. If that set has a period that long, you can time your sets because these waves are gonna come in in three to five wave sets. So you can count them down when you get to the beach, watch them come in and be prepared. Have your kayak in the water. As soon as that third or fourth wave starts rolling in, you get in your kayak, hop on your pedals, get on your paddle, bust through that last wave, and then you can make it out safely past the set. If you time it wrong, you know, you're going to get smashed. You're going to get possibly flipped. You might lose some gear. So you want to study the sets when you get there and figure out the timing and break through it. You can see them pan out now. You can see how these waves, this is mainly a wind driven swell that's coming in right now. There's not a huge swell out in the Gulf, but the wind is pretty constant. So you can see these waves are just coming in one right after another. This is why we didn't go today because this is just so much work. You could get through this easily, but this is just, you can see the white caps when they pan out. It's just, it's constant. And this looks small here, but if you're standing in this right here, this is like a waist high wave smashing onto the sand. And if they would pan out a little more, you would see that, you know, on a good sandbar, you're going to have a pretty, pretty good little rib high, hip high set coming through. So along with knowing the weather um, and what's forecasted for the weather to do, I'd say the next most important thing in offshore kayak fishing is going to be your safety equipment. Um, I know it's not a popular topic, but it's something that every kayak angler needs to be aware of and prepared for is making a plan and having the gear that it takes to deal with a situation when it arises that's on you know, when you're on the water, whether that be the weather changing and having a paddle leash to your kayak to get back in, someone taking a hook to the hand, um, a kingfish ripping your hand open where it's bleeding, um, a kayak turning over. There's all different, a bunch of different things that can go wrong when you're out there and no one wants to think about that. But the only way to deal with that properly is to think about it now and prepare for it before you get on the water because you never want to figure this stuff out whenever a bad situation is happening. So the first thing that you need to have when you get on the water is going to be a good PFD. Um, this is made by NRS. It's the Offshore Chinook. It just came out this year. It's got plenty of pockets for everything you could need. I always recommend having a good safety knife. Um, you know, these, these kayak knives are blunt on the end for the most part, so you're not going to stab anything, but you can cut a line if you need to, if it gets wrapped around you, um, you know, dispatch a fish if you have to. Um, but something that's comfortable is really important because you want to wear it. 
something that fits good because it's only going to keep you afloat if you've got it fitted properly. I personally never go kayak fishing or in a kayak without a PFD. It's just become second nature to me. I preach it. It's something that, you know, I feel very strongly about. It may not save your life on, but it definitely won't if you don't have it. So that's a must for me. Secondly, a good first aid kit. Something you need something like this that's going to keep you keep your stuff dry. I've got bandages, antiseptic, you know, um, gauze, uh, you know, just everything you would need to deal with a cut, um, a puncture, stab. Um, get something in your eye. I've got some eye drops in there. There's just this. This is pretty much has everything that you would need. It's got more than you need. I used to carry a much smaller one, but. I just decided to go ahead and, and get, get that. This is an emergency paddler's kit. This is something that most people don't have. A sponge is a great way to get water out of your kayak, especially the interior, the hull of your kayak. I always sponge out the inside of my kayak before I get on the water, and I try to remember to make sure all the water's out of the hull uh, when I return. This hand bilge pump, I cannot stress enough. Last year I was fishing a tournament here, the King of the Island tournament um, on our Pensacola Beach and I had busted a rod tube on the inside of my pro my Hobie Pro Angler from sticking my power pole inside of it year after year and I had no idea but I punctured the end of it the surf got big we stayed out there a long time um, I was taking wave after wave into the cockpit of my kayak all of that water was entering into that rod tube filling up the hole of my kayak without me knowing I had been battling it listing all day and just fought through it because I was in tournament mode. But when I opened up that hatch and I was still about a mile and a half offshore, I realized that I was in deep trouble. Um, my partner had already started going in, so I was kind of alone. I got him on the radio, he waited for me, but I used my hand bilge pump the entire way back in and a mile and a half. The waves would hit, I would open up my cockpit, the hatch of my cockpit, pump, 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 pump until another wave would come and close it the whole time I was pedaling in. By the time I got back to the shore, my Hobie Pro Angler was like this. And the, from the pedals up on my kayak was the only thing out of the water. And I had God knows how much gear. It wasn't like a life-threatening situation for me because I had my PFD on. I'm a good swimmer. But I had all my gear, all my electronics, all my stuff. That kayak could have easily sank if I wouldn't have had this in my kayak with me. So make sure you have one of those if you're leaving far from shore. Um, a good paddle leash is crucial if you don't leash. I always tell people when they're kayak fishing, if you don't want to lose it, strap it to your kayak. It's, n it's not a matter of if you're going to flip, it's a matter of when. Every single person that kayak fishes flips their kayak. So have a good leash. This is a little leash bag. It's got a leash in it, but I also use it for this stuff here. You need to have a whistle. This whistle is connected to a float and you need to have a reflective mirror. This is if something goes really wrong, you get swept out to sea, you're out there, and you're hoping that someone's gonna rescue you. You can signal from way off. If you're in the fog, uh, you need a boat to hear you. These, these high-pitched uh, safety whistles are really, really loud and can come in handy. Um, this pack has something really neat. I never had one of these until now. This is actually a paddle float, and like I said, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you're going to flip your kayak. If you don't know how to get back in your kayak, you're, you're, you're going to be in trouble. You need to get out there and practice flipping your kayak, riding your kayak, and getting back in it. That sounds like an easy task, but when you're stressed out, you're in panic mode, the whole of your kayak's filled up with water, it can be very difficult. Some people do a little rope ladder with sections of PVC to climb back up in. I can get back up in my kayak, any of my kayaks, without anything, but this is a neat device. This is a little airbag that blows up quickly, and then you slip it on the end of your paddle. You can put it outside of your kayak, put the other side in and you've basically got something that you know you can use to launch yourself up into your kayak. Comes in a nice little neat mesh bag. Um, you wanna have it somewhere on your kayak that you can get to it quickly. That's another important thing. Like this bilge pump. You, I used to always keep mine in the inside of my kayak and the hull of it because it was out of the way. Well, after that experience last year at King of the Island, this thing is right behind my seat 
strapped to my kayak so that no matter what, I know where it is and I can get to it. It's, I have my bat right here for dispatching fish and I have my bilge pump right here. Because if, you have to, if you're trying to get inside the hull of your kayak with your kayak listing in two to three foot seas with constant wind, you're never gonna be able to get to it in time. I mean, I, trust me, I went through it. And then by the grace of God, I got to mine somehow and got it out and saved my kayak and thousands of dollars worth of gear. So make yourself an emergency paddler's kit. Have yourself a first aid kit. Get you a good PFD that's comfortable that you enjoy wearing. Down here in Florida, we wear uh, the wraparound horse collar PFDs a lot in the summer. It gets really hot. I've gotten into the habit of wearing a full-size PF, full PFD, especially when going offshore because you never know, you might get hit in the head and not be able to inflate your kayak or inflate your PFD. So get you one that you like, that you're going to wear, that fits you well, that's comfortable, and just stay safe out on the water so you can come back and tell people about all those giant fish you caught.